time stands still. The heart speaks. Beaded memories pass through the fingers. A moment apart, but never alone. Out of silence, the power to see, to love, to create. Born in contemplation, the mystery of the rosary. In 1940, as war darkened the skies of Poland, Jan Tiranowski prayed the rosary for peace. He lived in Krakow, near the heart of the conflict, the occupied Wawel Cathedral. At his parish, St. Stanislaus Kostka, nearly all of the priests had been deported or killed. Jan found himself responsible for the clandestine youth ministry. He organized living rosary groups, each consisting of 15 young people committed to praying a mystery of the rosary daily. Eleven vocations to the priesthood came from these groups. One of the newly ordained priests established a similar living rosary group in his first parish. This same priest wrote a letter about the power of the rosary, recommending the prayer to the world. The rosary is my favorite prayer, a marvelous prayer, marvelous in its simplicity and in its depth. What is the rosary? The rosary is a pattern of prayers, repeating familiar scriptures, petitions, and praises with a repetition like breathing. Its heartbeat is the meditation on the mysteries of God's revelation. It is a Marian prayer centered on Jesus, just as Mary herself pondered the mysteries of Jesus' life. A string of beads is often used to keep count and keep focus. Each decade consists of three basic prayers. The Our Father begins our meditation. Jesus solemnly commanded this prayer, saying, This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in each of the mysteries, Jesus always leads us to the Father. Ten times we repeat the Ave Maria or the Hail Mary. Since the fifth century, the angelic salutation and Elizabeth's greeting to Mary have been recited together in the Eastern Rites of the Catholic Church. These words from Scripture were joined with the name of Jesus and followed by an invocation to Mary. The greeting of the angel was the moment when the greatest event of salvation history took place. God himself entered the human drama. Our contemplation of each mystery is always linked to it. The Gloria ends our meditation and is its goal. The prayer of praise that is the high point of all contemplation. Different communities have various traditions to begin and end the rosary, but in its essence, the prayer is the same. Growing up Catholic, a cradle Catholic as they would call me, I knew of the rosary but never learned how to pray the rosary. And I went to Catholic schools my whole life, and what a shame we never learned how to pray the rosary. It wasn't until I was an adult that I actually sat down and taught myself from a book how to pray the rosary. The rosary now to my whole family is so, we, have, we have such a closeness to it because it brings us every day closer to Our Lady, closer to Jesus through Our Lady, and we can relive all of those wonderful mysteries. But it's been a long haul. I mean, I didn't even used to know any of the beginning or ending prayers. I always thought I was doing it wrong. I had to have my book. I didn't know any of the stuff. And now my children are leading the rosary for other people. Where does the rosary come from? Its origin is a mystery itself. The word rosary comes from the Latin rosarium, which meant both a rose garden and an anthology of prayer or verse. One can trace the development of the rosary from four main sources. 
First, from the ancient use of prayer beads found in all cultures. Second, from key events in sacred scripture. Third, from heavenly visions and miracles also associated with this prayer. And fourth, from the magisterium of the church, which has praised this prayer in many of its documents. The rosary is a compendium of the entire gospel. Hindus, Buddhists, and Muslims all use objects similar to the rosary. They are memory devices. The great difference lies in what the rosary beads are used to remember. The mysteries marked by the beads summarize the story of how God revealed Himself, His love, and His will for mankind. It is a dialogue, not a mere matter of recalling information, but of allowing God to speak to us. The Christian tradition of reciting psalms at fixed hours of the day, known as the Liturgy of the Hours, is deeply related to the Rosary. In the 12th century, monks who did not know how to read began to substitute the 150 psalms with 150 Our Fathers, and they counted their prayers on beads. Others outside the monastery adopted this practice as a way to pray without ceasing. The Marian Psalter, a prayer of 150 Aves, was prayed with a repetition similar to that of the Our Father. These two prayer methods were combined to create a framework for 20 different meditations taken from the life of Jesus and Mary. The crux of the Rosary is that we meditate on the now 20 mysteries of the Rosary. And each one of these mysteries of the Rosary is an event in the, in the life of Christ. And we meditate on these events, so to think about what took place during this mystery and, and what it means in our lives and how, how we apply it. I'm a convert. I used to be Protestant. And uh, when I had cancer and I started, before I even became Catholic, my daughter Mindy would be praying the rosary. And it was everything to me. You know, just the idea of it, it being the, the battle, the, you know, the weapon of Our Lady and the weapon of, of grace. Our Lady has never refused me a grace through the recitation of the Rosary. In addition to its natural origins, the devotion of the Rosary has a supernatural source. Apparitions of Mary, investigated and approved by the Catholic Church, attest to the value of this prayer. Perhaps the most well-known occurred at Fatima, Portugal. I believe this is the greatest Marian apparition in the history of the church. It is given for the unprecedented circumstances of the uh, spirit of revolt against God. This is what the Virgin came to answer. And the Rosary is the, the simplest and easiest and most powerful way for everybody to take up in order to bring about the return of Christ to society, the return of God to humanity, to save the world. In 1917, Our Lady appeared to three shepherd children from a village near Fatima. She returned five more times to visit them and gave them a message for the world, calling every person to conversion, penance, and prayer. She encouraged them to pray the rosary daily. In all the operations of Our Lady in Fatima, she told the children, pray the rosary every day. And, and that is the continual message of Our Lady, was pray the rosary every day. In her last apparition, she confirmed her message by allowing a crowd of 70,000 people to witness a series of miracles, such as the miracle of the sun. Well, you know, when Our Lady comes down from heaven and asks you to pray the rosary, I think you should listen. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. Many miracles affecting the destiny of entire nations are attributed to the Rosary. The Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary on October 7th recalls the protection of Europe in 1571, known as the Miracle of Lepanto. And, in more recent history, the Edsa Revolution of the Philippines was a result of this prayer. Father Pablo Straub, missionary, tells the story. Philippines, for many, many years, was, mark my words, under a tyrant, a terrible tyrant, that 
virtually on the whole country. Now in Manila, there's a big municipal or presidential palace called Malacanon, and there lived the tyrant. I remember a rosary rally in the big municipal park in Manila. Four million people went to that rosary. And one day the people with their rosaries and with no other arm prayed their way towards Malacanon, not threateningly, just prayerfully. And out came the tanks. And the tank operators had orders, don't stop. If there's people on the boulevard, roll over them. Let us place ourselves next to the tank operators inside the tank, rolling toward the people. They're only a few yards away. As they themselves reported later, a beautiful lady, a beautiful lady, came between them and the people, between the tanks and the people. Such a beautiful lady as they'd never seen before. They got out of their tanks and walked toward the people and said, please, we have no rosary. Would you please give us all rosaries? We want to pray with you. Pray the rosary. And that beautiful lady will come into your life. Do you want peace? Here it is. God bless you. Prayer creates unity in a family or community. In turn, community preserves the most effective methods of prayer that then become enduring traditions like the Rosary. The Rosary has been guarded and encouraged by the Magisterium of the Catholic Church, recommending it in official documents such as the Catechism. In the past 500 years, the Rosary has been endowed with more indulgences than any other prayer. To receive a plenary indulgence, one has only to pray a set of mysteries together with his or her family or community in accord with the normal conditions for indulgences. This grace given by the Church is a sign of the power of the Rosary and the highest recommendation for praying it. In this month of October, dedicated to the Holy Rosary, we ponder with Mary the mysteries of our salvation, and we ask the Lord to help us grow in our understanding of the marvelous things He has done for us. Reason alone cannot prove why the Rosary works as the privileged prayer to end wars, work miracles, and establish the Kingdom of God. But that it does is a fact proven by history. The rosary, a mystery, in hand, yet held with mind and heart. In scripture's script, you find your part in salvation's future history. All stories share in his story the secret joy of Nazareth. The sorrow that must pass through death to see the promise of glory. Do you believe? Join in and sing. Of faith, the choice hardest to choose. Of life, with never more to lose. And love revealed in suffering. Mary first to follow Jesus knows the way to lead us.